All right, so let's talk a little bit about partial design and principles, path of insertion, and uh, some basics, and then I'll draw out a design on this cast after I survey it. We got a fairly typical Kennedy class one, so bilateral distal extension. That dictates that we're gonna have mesial rests on the abutment teeth, okay? So we're gonna have to have a mesial rest here and a mesial rest here, okay? And uh, so that the, so that we minimize the bottle opener effect on these teeth to try and preserve those as much as we can. Okay. Then we're going to find a path of insertion fairly level. We can't put the partial in the mouth at a big steep angle, so it doesn't allow. We can't. We, we're looking for ideal cresta convexities on these on these teeth that we're going to clasp, and ideal guide planes on the distal of them. And that dictates that we can't tilt this in a, in a crazy direction where it can't, the partial can't fit in the mouth and go in. It's going to be relatively flat. Okay. Now the ideal crest of convexity or survey line at this path of insertion for our retentive clasps is at the junction of the cervical and the middle third. That's where we would like to try and find our mesial buckle undercut and our survey line on these two teeth, a tilt that allows that. So that's left and right, buccal lingual. Anterior, posterior, we're looking for a guide plane here that's up in the occlusal third of the tooth, okay? Ideally, it doesn't run all the way down to the tissue, like this side might, but rel a relatively flat guide plane on there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna change the tilt on this until using this analyzing rod until I can find okay, a mesial buckle undercuts on both teeth with a survey line that's near the junction of the middle and cervical third. If that survey line is up near the top of the tooth that means the clasp has to stay up there okay, until it drops into the undercut. And that means the clasp is grabbing the top of a fence post and going to rock it out. We don't want to rock that tooth out. We want to grab the fence post down at the bottom where it can't move it out as easy. Okay, so I'm going to find a tilt that gives me an undercut okay, on the mesial buckle. That's where our clasp has to go for this Kennedy class one bilateral distal extension. Okay. And then I'll look for the guide planes. We're still relatively flat on those okay so that's that should give me that tilt now i'm going to put on a carbon marker and i'm going to mark those while i'm at it i'm going to come around and mark the distals that's going to help me draw these clasps in Show me the guide plane. Okay. So now I've got a, I've, I've measured it, and you can use a measuring uh, part of the surveyor. If we're going to have a ten thousandths undercut here, if we're going to use a an I bar or a twenty thousandths, ideally for a wrought wire class. Those are our two options to take the stress off these teeth. Okay. Survey lines are pretty good. The junction of the middle and cervical third it gives us an undercut here without the class being right on the tissue. Okay, guide plane is low on this tooth, it's not ideal. Guide plane is pretty good on this tooth, that looks pretty good. So that gives us our path of insertion that's uh, the best we can do for this case. The rest you could uh, prepare in for anything that's going to help. Okay, so now to draw this out, to draw out our design, okay, I'm going to start out, now I'm done with the surveyor. Now let's throw some tripod marks on here while we're at it. Okay, I want to put three tripod marks that are all in the same plane that's going to allow us to put this back back on the table in the same orientation. So I can't move the surveyor at this point. So the very tip of the carbon marker is where I'm going to mark, okay, using the carbon marker. Now I've got my three marks. I can raise that up and get it out of here. I circle those in red. That allows us to take it off this table or the lab to take it off the table and put it back in the same orientation. 
Okay, so I'm going to draw it out. So I've got a mesial rest. In this particular case, I'm going to come around the lingual with a metal plate. I'm going to come around the distal to make my distal guide plane here. I'm going to drop onto the tissue by one millimeter and I'm going to make my finish line where the acrylic is going to butt up against the metal. I'm going to do the same on this side. Mesial rest. I'm going to kind of come around the lingual. I'm going to have a lingual plate there. Come around the distal. Go down the, the distal buckle line angle onto the tissue by one millimeter and come down and make my finish line, my external finish line. Okay, and that's where my grid work is gonna start. From there, I can come forward with my two finish lines and make the inferior portion of the major connector. Okay, it needs to be off the floor of the mouth. When it gets to this area, it's gonna point towards where the acrylic is gonna to extend to the periphery. Marking in red, that's where the acrylic is gonna be. Okay. From here, we've got a little edentulous space here. We're not going to try and put a tooth in this particular case. I'm going to put a little metal dummy in that area to, just to maintain the space. I'm going to utilize a guide plane on the canine. Okay. The type of major connector we're going to have here is going to have to be a lingual plate. All right. We haven't got room for a lingual bar. A lingual bar has to stay at least four millimeters away from the teeth. Okay. And we don't quite have room for that. I'm going to come up and. Uh, and scallop and rest on the cingulums of these anterior teeth, including the canine, and meet up okay, with my mesial rests like that. From here, we can draw our grid work, the part that's going to hold the acrylic on. Try and keep it a little to the lingual to allow room to set our denture teeth properly. Okay. And lastly, we'll draw our clasps. In this case, I'm going to use rot wire clasps. They're drawn in red. Okay, we engage a mesial buckle undercut, follow the survey line, come up to the proximal contact or just below, and then they go onto the grid work, not where we're going to set the denture teeth, and they'll get soldered down here where we're soldering, not where the clasp is going to flex up in this area. Go to the other one, mesial buckle undercut, 20 thousandths of an inch if you're measuring it that way. Then follow the survey line, come up around the distal. Okay. On the lingual, they're going to get onto the grid work and get soldered there. Okay. And there we have our drawn out design for the lab to follow. If you want to draw the acrylic, that's drawn in red. Okay, you can draw the acrylic extensions because that's added to the framework, just like the wrought wire is added to the framework, so it's drawn in red. Everything else is drawn in blue with the exception of circling our tripod marks.